Mrs. Lane. What do you want to do tonight? Same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. This is Justin and Erica from You Are Creators, and we have a special guest, Miss Pam Grout. Welcome, Pam. Hey, thank you. I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much. So let me give the listeners a little background on who Pam Grout is. She is a best-selling author, master manifester, world traveler. She's also a social entrepreneur, a teacher, and a beautiful inspiration. Pam's portfolio includes an abundance of magazine articles, screenplays, TV series, a live soap opera, and 16 books. More recently, she authored the bestseller, E Squared, and we are in and honored to have Pam here with us today. Hey, thanks, guys. That, that was an impressive, um, impressive <laughs> thing. Thank you. I sound pretty good. <laughs> okay, so let's just jump right into it. Um, so, Pam, can you just give the listeners just a little um, more information on who you are and your background? Well, I've always been a writer. I used to write for a newspaper, and then just little by little, I have you know started writing books. I write articles for a lot of different magazines. I write for CNN and Huffington Post. I do a lot of travel writing. I write um, for People Magazine, and I've always practiced these principles, um, these metaphysical principles, and that's um, probably what we want to talk about tonight. But anyway, this book E Squared that has just been this rock star of a book um, talks about these principles and it actually challenges people to try these principles in their own life and these principles are things I've used in my own life to create this pretty amazing life for myself and um, I thought hey let's let's make sure everybody else knows about this stuff too because I really want the world to work for everybody so anyway my background is just I've, I've been a writer for most of my life and I'm, I'm a reader a writer a studier a, a traveler I, I, I like doing a lot of different things Awesome, awesome, Pam. So, Pam, how did you first get introduced to this knowledge, this this knowledge that we actually create our reality? Well, you know, I believe that we come in knowing this knowledge, and I think we're mm-hmm. trained by our culture in a different <laughs> training. We are trained that life is difficult, that life is scary, that we need to abide by these rules. And so I think I always knew this on some level, and I kind of think everybody knows this, but I think this force, this cultural force is so strong that it teaches us, oh, you need to really work hard and you need to do all this stuff. And so when I started practicing, I I started hearing about these principles. I I, um, have gone to a unity church. I've done different workshops, different things like that. And I heard this, and it really resonated with me. It's like, wow, I know that to be true. I know that you know, life really is beautiful and that, you know, my thoughts, you know, are actually reflected back to me in this world that I see. Right. So I think um, this knowing was always there, and I think I had to, you know, be reintroduced to it, maybe when I was a little bit older, but as soon as I started hearing this kind of stuff, it just, oh, wow, this is this is true, and it just me too. totally captured me, and I wanted yes. to find out more and more and more. I think that's kind of the process that happened for me. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Wow. So in your book, Pam, you talked about quantum physics and how it gives us a better understanding of our physical world. What does quantum physics actually prove? Well, quantum physics is the coolest science of all. I mean, and here's the truth about science. You know, we we put up these hypotheses and we think, okay, we're going to prove this. But um, it's actually impossible because everything that we observe, we actually affect. And that's one of the main principles of quantum physics. So it's like if we expect, we put our expectations on something that we're observing and then our expectations actually create that particular reality happening for us. But what quantum physics is, is basically saying that um, there's all these um, these energy waves, you know, so, so it's all energy. And um, we create this energy. It forms around our thoughts. So our consciousness is everything. And, and quantum physics um, is basically saying that, you know, we're, we're energy, we're matter, we're all these different things, and it depends on how we're consciously perceiving it. So how we perceive something is how it shows up for us. And so exactly. quantum physics is about these, these little packages, these little quanta packages is what the name 
um, quantum physics comes from. So it's all kind of nebulous, and then as we observe it, it, it forms to our expectations and our perceptions. And so the world that we see is actually the realized form of you know what we've been expecting and, and seeing and what we we want to see. So quantum packets, I guess, is kind of what quantum physics is, and then it just conforms to whatever whatever our thoughts are. And because so much of our thoughts have been formed by this, this is the way it is, the way we are taught. So we've kind of created the same day over and over and over again with the same reality over and over and over again. But the truth is we can create something completely different and magical, and we have yes. that power, and that's really where we need to go is to use our imagination to, to use this power that we have to create something completely awesome and different than, you know, what we're seeing over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Okay, Beautiful. so in the book E Squared, you speak about the invisible energy force, the field of infinite possibilities you call FP. How can we tap into this field to create the world that we desire? Well, the truth is we're tapping into this all the time, but I think we need to be more conscious in how we tap into it because when we just fall in lockstep with the, the dominant culture, we're just going to create the same old thing over and over and over again. So the fact is we're all resonating to these different fields, these quantum packets. <laughs> I mean, it sounds kind of vague and nebulous, but, you know, so we're constantly interacting with the field. But if we become conscious about it and say, okay, I'm going to make this intention. I want to react in this way. I want to, you know, see these particular things. We start setting intentions. We start, you know, opening what I call my joy channels. Then we start seeing things in a much more um, pleasing way, in a way that, you know, kind of conforms to what we, what we believe, what we want. So it's really right. important to be conscious about what we're thinking, what we're seeing, what we're observing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, okay, can we actually create anything we want, big or small? Can we? I believe that we can. I believe what okay. happens is we have so many different thoughts and ideas going around. But if you get very, very, very clear and you get all your thoughts going in one direction, in the book I talk about lasers. And, you know, laser yeah. energy is just all focused in one direction and it's just very pinpointed. I mean, it goes exactly where it needs to go. What most of us, the consciousness of most of us has, okay, on one hand we want this, but on that hand we might worry about that. You know what I mean? Our, our little, those energy waves are like really literally bopping all over the place. They're not just consistent. But if we can get really clear and really focused and really get all that energy going in the same direction, it can happen literally overnight. How can we manifest things faster? Or can we? Um, well, okay, here's what I believe. You know, there's a... The whole thing they talk about the law of attraction. I believe we are connected to every single thing. We are we're all one. So it's all right. one big connection. So really more than manifesting things, it's more about materializing it into your reality. Because every okay. single thing you could possibly want, you're already connected to. In fact, it's only you thinking that you don't have it is the only reason that I could even keep it away. So if you if you get really clear and just focused on what it is you want, I mean, because like I said, you're already, it's already there. It's already there. Right, but you're yeah. choosing to focus on other things. It's kind of like a radio dial. You know, it's like, okay, you can, you can, you can listen to, well, you can use television. You can use, listen to ABC or CBS or NBC. But when you're, you know, focused in on NBC, you're not aware of what's going on on CBS. So, you, you, so we really focused on one thing. But if we just totally open up, we can at any time switch to a different channel. And it's so, all there. It's all there. It's just that this is what we're choosing to focus on at this particular moment. Right. So, okay. So do you believe in parallel realities? There is a different version of you that made a different choice? I definitely yeah. do. I believe okay. there's yeah, I believe there's all these different realities and what we're getting, yeah. what's showing up is what we're choosing to focus on. Like that and is the cool. problem is we keep focusing on it's like you know, you take the trash out. I mean, who sits right. there and looks at the trash? <laughs> or, you know, it's like, oh, let's just keep looking at it, looking at it, looking at it. Well, you know that, you know, the trash man's going to come and pick it and take it away. And that's right. how we need to look at life. Whatever we're seeing, it's like, just let, let, get into that morphic field that will take care of it. It's all going to be fine. But instead, we just sit there and focus on looking, okay, how come I'm not taking the trash out or whatever. And we just keep looking exactly. at the wrong thing over and over and over again. So change your focus. Change your focus. Totally change your focus. Focus on what you want, the end result. Focus, focus on the end want. result. Feel like you're already there. Like you, I mean, just feel mm. it. Um, right. 
see it, everything, just be it. And once you feel it so strongly in your in your thoughts, then it will show up in your physical reality as well. Right. Beautiful. Right. So recently, Justin and I relaunched a dating website. It's called datinggrow.com. Dating and Grow. So, I love it. I love it. Good <laughs> so name. Good title. <laughs> Thank you. So many uh, people, you know, they're out there and they're looking for their soulmate. They want to settle down. How can we use this FP to draw a spouse or a partner into our lives? Well, here's the big thing. We are love. And I think it's funny when people go, oh, I want to attract love into my life. Here's the thing. We are all love. That's who we yes. are. That is our reality. And once we start really, truly getting it, that we love everybody and that love is who we are. I mean, that's all we're, we're these big balls of love, <laughs> basically. Yeah. And so we <laughs> cut out this part of ourselves. Oh, you know, I need to find just this right person. But I think once we get it and once we start being the love we are, I mean, we, we can't keep all the, all the people away. I mean, our perfect partner is right there. I mean, that person, in fact, I think we have kind of like a lot of perfect partners. I mean, there's a lot mm-hmm. of people that we, could, we can, you know, share that love with. And I think that um, once we get clear about that that's who we are, I mean, we can't keep it away. I mean, it's right there. It's right there on the other side of that veil that we're, we're perceiving as, as not having it. Okay, so what would you say are some simple tests that we can carry out to prove that we actually create our reality? Yes. Well, that's what my book's about. You know, I think we've heard about these principles for a long time, and I think it's really time to put the rubber to the road, so to speak. We really need to, you know, if this stuff works, then why aren't we using it? We need to be using it all the time. So I've created these little experiments, and I set them up like scientific experiments, you know, with the hypotheses and and all that, the little lab report sheets. And we... So we, there, most of them are 48-hour experiments, and I literally say, hey, look, if there is this force out there that has my back, which I believe is the truth, I believe that is the ultimate reality, then if right. that indeed is true, then it will show up for me. So that's a really good experiment for people to do, say, you know, and give it a time frame. And for me, it's mm-hmm. more about us jarring into, you know, jarring us into paying attention, not so much as saying, okay, now I want you to give me something. It's like this, these blessings and these miracles and these signs, they are, are out there all the time. But because we're focused on other things, we're not seeing them. So it's really a way of getting us to pay attention. So uh, the, the right. first easy experiment, it's like, okay, I call it in the book, I have all these kind of funny names for it, the dude abides, this force does abide. <laughs> yeah, there, is this, um, <laughs> there is this force that has, my, that has my back, that has my best interest at heart. And so right. we literally say, okay, you've got 48 hours, make your presence known. You know, and so more than anything, it's teaching us to kind of pay attention because when we realize we think, oh, there's a deadline, and I'm, they're supposed to show up in 48 hours, then we start looking and then we start noticing because what mm-hmm. we're getting out of life is what we're focused on, it's where we're putting our attention. So now right. we're putting our attention on, wow, some blessing's going to happen, and it, you know, it does happen once we start looking for it, once we start realizing it's there. So that's a real simple one: is you'll give the dude or the, the FP, the God, whatever you want to call it, give it 48 hours to make. Make its present known. Ask for a really clear sign that you cannot write off as coincidence. And the exactly. stories I hear about this are just so amazing. It's really, it's really been a lot of fun. Pam, you know what? I actually read your book and I manifested something that was so crazy, and I took a picture of it. Oh, tell me about it. it. <laughs> yes, and I put it on Instagram. What I did was. I wanted to see if I could manifest a blue apple. A blue? Something so yeah, wow. something <laughs> so random that I'm like, okay, if this really <laughs> works, then you know, somehow, some way, I will run into a blue apple. Well, in Bed Bath and Beyond, I was walking down the aisle and I turned around and there was a row. <laughs> of blue apples, okay? I took a picture of it, and I put it on Instagram. Mm-hmm. So can you tell me your top two personal manifestation stories, Pam? That happened to me or happened to people that I know? Happened to you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I've had so many. In fact, every day I have this little program that I do, and I, I get up in the morning and I say, something amazingly awesome is going to happen to me today. And so every day right. something amazingly awesome happens. But... um. Boy, let's see what my top – boy, that, that's putting a lot of pressure. That has to be my top story. <laughs> um, one of the things that's been really cool, I, um, 
I love to travel, and I grew up, my uh, father was a minister. We had no money. We grew up in Kansas, but I always knew I loved to travel, and I wanted to travel. I had no clue how to make that happen. I mean, you know, the typical way to learn to, or to get to travel is you, you get a job, you save up your money, and then you go travel. But right. I knew I wanted to do that. I kept focusing on all these places I wanted to go, and I found out about this career called travel writing. So I literally have been to all the continents except Antarctica. I mean, like like in two days, I'm heading to Dominican Republic. I'm going to Kenya. Mm-hmm. I'm going that to California. Cool. I mean, these are all trips I'm doing just in the month of April. So um, so that's really cool. I mean, I'm a kid from Kansas. You know, I live in the middle of the United <laughs> States. I mean, how am I going to travel? And particularly because, you know, I, I didn't grow up in a, a wealthy family, but because that is something I really wanted to do, I had that strong intention. I mean, just all these amazing trips come to me. I mean, I'm literally traveling all over the world doing all these exciting things. So, so that's been a really cool uh, manifestation. I think also, you know, having this best-selling book, you know, um, last New Year's Eve, or actually the New Year's Eve before the book came out, it came out January 28th, 2013. I took this big stick. I was out visiting my sister in Savannah, Georgia, and I went to the beach, Tybee, Tybee Beach, and I wrote, E Squared will be an international bestseller. And then, you know, I put it, you know, these big letters on the beach, and then, the, you know, the waves came in and took it out to the ocean. And I believe that, um, you know, that intention, you know, made that happen. I mean, my book's been right. translated into 30 languages. It's just wow. been really taken off. And I think, you know, I mean, most people go, oh, marketing, you know, you need to do this, need to do that. No, you need to believe that it's possible and you need mm-hmm. to um, let it go and let the universe handle the details. But anyway, so right. those are both really cool things. I mean, my, my book has become this big sensation, which has opened all these doors to all these other things that I want to do. I, I've created a television series. And um, again, I'm in Kansas. I don't know too many Hollywood directors, but because of my <laughs> book, all these people are calling me and contacting me. I mean, agents are coming out of the woodwork. So that is cool. I, yeah, I know it's so cool. And I so I think um, you know I've just had one amazing manifestation after another. And one of the really cool things from this book is that I hear from so many people. Like I love your Blue Apple story. I mean, every day yes. I open yes. my computer and I hear these amazing stories from people because people are sharing them to, with me. And so whatever. Um, you know, belief I had before, it's like it's only been amplified. Like, wow, this stuff works so well because I hear these stories over and over again. It's like that four-minute mile story. You know, like when the first person ran four-minute mile, then we all knew that, oh, that's possible for a human being exactly. to do that. And so because I hear all these stories about things people are doing, it's like it becomes more and more part of my consciousness because, like, oh, wow, well, if he did it, I can do it too. You know, exactly. if she did it, I can do it too. And I think that's what's been such a rewarding experience for me from this is not only have I, you know, created these amazing things for myself, but I'm hearing about all these things people, other people are doing. It's like, wow, you know, we can create a world that really does work. This is possible, we can. you know. Yes, we can. Yeah. Absolutely. We can. Yeah. Pam, you know, um, you are my Second favorite author. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. Who's your first? <laughs> the late great Stuart Wilde. Oh, I love him too. He was my he's my favorite author. But seriously, I love your writing style. You are really funny. Oh, you are really you. really funny. So, <laughs> Pam, you're so awesome. Thank you so much for being on. You are creators, really. Thank, thank you so you. much. Oh, thank and guys, you. Make sure I you... appreciate you having me. To all the listeners, make sure you go and you pick up that book, E Squared. Please it do. is just awesome. amazing. It is amazing. So, Pam, can you just share with us really quickly what you're working on next? Um, any big projects you have coming up? Well, I just finished E Cubed, which is the follow up book to E Squared. And it's really funny because I had pitched Hay House, that's who my you know, E Squared was with, on another book about creativity and spirituality, which is, you know, I'm a, I'm a creator. I love creating all kinds of different things. I'm a writer, I write for all different publications. And mm-hmm. and so anyway, they said, oh, you know, that's a great idea. We'll do that next. And I think, you know, create or die, which is what I call that one. That one will come out next. But they wanted me to do E cubed, which is, and it was really easy for me to do because, again, I've heard so many stories from people, and it was kind of like the corollaries that go with the principles I talked about in E squared. So anyway, right. I just finished that book. In fact, I'm kind of in the process. The editor has returned it to me with, you know, her little queries or whatever. And so that one comes out September 16th. So that's my next book. And then I've also got, you know, this TV series that I'm, that I'm working on. So those are kind of my big projects at the moment. Okay, cool. cool. We're going to mark our calendars now for what, what was the date? <laughs> September 16th is when it's coming okay. out. So, Perfect. Yeah. 
Perfect. Well, Pam, thank you again. Thank you so much. Yeah, well, thank you guys. This is Justin and Erica from You Are Creators, and we support your dreams.